Welcome to Key Stage Wiki. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred from one energy store to another. This is the law of conservation of energy that applies across the entire universe. It tells us that we cannot make our own energy. All we can ever do is take it from somewhere else. It also tells us that the energy we gain cannot just cease to exist, but we can lose that energy when it's transferred into stores that we can't use. The sun is the source of energy for almost every organism on the planet. Light transfers that energy across millions of kilometers of space until it reaches the Earth. There it is used by organisms to move, grow and reproduce. But not every organism can absorb sunlight to do these things. So how do they get that energy? Well, the organisms that are able to absorb energy directly from the sun are called producers. These are organisms that make their own food. If they're using light to do this, they use the process of photosynthesis. The organisms that cannot make their own food are called consumers. Consumers are organisms that must feed on other organisms to gain that energy. Scientists show this in a diagram called a food chain. This is a diagram that shows the energy transfer between organisms. Here we can see the producer, grass, which gains energy from sunlight, and the consumers, zebra and lions, which gain their energy by eating other organisms. Now, before we look at the transfer of energy along the food chain, we must remember the term trophic levels. These are each stage of a food chain. A producer always occupies the first trophic level, and consumers occupy the higher trophic levels. Here we can see that the sun transfers energy to the first trophic level. In this case, it's grass. That energy is transferred to the zebra when it eats the grass. And the energy is transferred to the lion when the lion eats the zebra. However, keep in mind that the food chain only shows us transfer of energy between organisms. It does not show us what happens to all the energy. Most of that energy is never transferred from one organism to the next. Most is lost to the food chain, because at each stage the organisms use that energy before passing only some of it along. In fact, only around 10% makes it to the next trophic level. Scientists use a Sankey diagram to show just how much energy may be lost when it is transferred from one store to another. Here, we can see that we start with a large amount of energy, but the majority is wasted, and only a small amount of the energy is useful. The amount of energy is shown by the thickness of the line at each stage. As you can see here, the line starts out thick, but then splits into two thinner lines, with the useful energy, shown as less than the wasted energy, because we can see that the useful energy is a thinner line than the wasted energy. Here our Sankey diagram has three stages, the grass, the zebra, and the lion. If the grass were to gain 10,000 kilojoules of energy from the sun, some of that would be lost in respiration, and when the zebra eat the grass, the zebra can't digest all of it so some of that energy is also wasted. That means that zebra will only get around a thousand kilojoules of energy. After that, the zebra use energy themselves for respiration. When lions eat the zebra, they can't digest all of it, so more energy is wasted. That means that the lions will only gain around 
100 kilojoules of energy. In this way, energy is lost at every stage on a food chain. Animals also eat to gain material for growth. This material is called biomass. This is the material an organism is made from after the water has been removed. So imagine if we took an organism and removed all the water. We'd be left with a dry powder containing all the organic material it was made from. That would be its biomass. However, just like energy, most of the biomass is lost rather than transferred to the next trophic level. Again, this is around 10%. An animal may lose the biomass by defecating, that means to poo, urinating, that means to wee, or exhaling, that means to breathe out. Scientists show the amount of biomass at each trophic level with a pyramid of biomass. Here we can see that if we have 50,000 kilograms of grass, then there will only be 5,000 kilograms of zebra. And if we have 5,000 kilograms of zebra, we will only have 500 kilograms of lion. This actually shows us how many organisms can be supported by the producer in a food chain. So, 50,000 kilograms of grass can support 500 kilograms of zebra, which is roughly 14 zebra. While 14 zebra can support roughly 500 kilograms of lions, which is around 3 lions. The answers to the following questions will be shown at the end of the video. Using this food chain, calculate the amount of energy the fish will receive. Pause the video now to give it a try. For this food chain, draw a pyramid of biomass to show how much biomass will be available at each trophic level. Pause the video. For more information on food chains, visit keystagewiki.com and for further videos, like the video and subscribe to this channel.